uh, what happened yesterday here in working with uh, Latvian coaches and what are the main points that you can uh, underline for us today? Yes, um, I, I uh, entasked myself uh, into the invitation which was uh, a privilege in a way to see how uh, UEFA A coaches were um, operating uh, in the Latvian League um, at top level football and um, one, one major key point that I wanted to discover for myself um, for my own personal development was which uh, level are the uh, coaches at um, in their uh, coaching pathway journey um, because they currently have jobs, they currently have roles at professional clubs and, and to boost their knowledge uh, and get them in line with the elite um, performances of footballers um, around the world and, and, and to engage into their understanding of where they may need a little bit more information and development but at the same time I wanted to take uh, for myself uh, an idea and understanding of whether we are really communicating this uh, across the board um, to get them in line with, with the UEFA A stroke B um, levels. Are they consistent um, with English um, UEFA A courses and B courses? Are they consistent uh, across the board? And I think um, the points that I did take is that the A uh, level, um, the, the core subject matters um, and the coach's knowledge were not much different than, than they are in England. I understood uh, from when I uh, started the training sessions that I, ha I had some players. Um, one uh, in particular was Igor Stefanos, uh, he used to play at Arsenal. Um, so I was quite conscious of the fact that they, their transition from player to, to coaching um, was quite quick. And that is a key issue um, in, in world football that does a coach necessarily uh, uh, make a good player? Does a player necessarily make a good coach? Um, the enthusiasm levels, I cannot fault. Um, everyone was passionate, everyone uh, warmed to my questions. They even volunteered questions and, and gave a lot of input that I took back with me as well. That, that is a, a misconception, I think, that uh, players, exceptional players, cannot make coaches. Um, I think uh, it, I think there's a lot of players um, that have been great players that never looked at coaching. If they did, then we would see a lot more great coaches. I don't I I, I, I dispel that theory because um, most players uh, at any level they they understand what it took to play. They interacted all their career with players, so. For me, a coach who was a former player will be able to relate to what the players went through um, better than any coach that hasn't been a player. If they match this with their enthusiasm, passion and knowledge for the game and they study quite hard in, in, in an intense way throughout the pathway and develop those skills, because coaching is not just about telling, coaching is about engaging. In England we have uh, what we call the four co corners of um, football, uh, the development, and, and it's a long-term player development um, journey that the player has to go through and we have to deliver um, to our youth, uh, especially, um, teachings which are more mentally, psychologically uh, and socially apt with football. Because football is not just about kicking the football, all of it is psychological. However, we have developed, and myself in particular, have developed certain drills which focus on the mental input, the awareness, the alert um, of the mind, the human mind, while a human being is being put through their paces. Because football is a pressure game, as we know, and if we are not alert, if we don't awaken our senses, uh, our neural pathways, we need to keep those pathways open and learning 
on a continual basis. And if we do not do repetition exercises, such as the drills that I did with the cones uh, on the grid, the 4x4 four four coloured cones, coded cones, um, it, it will just be a matter of a player getting the football and going and playing football without really understanding the, the key areas of development uh, to their brain engaging with their actual functions of their physical um, activities during any given moment in time in the football match. I hope that makes sense. Well, um, football is uh, developing more into a non-contact sport um, and uh, through research, scientific research in terms of um, the physical strains, constraints that an athlete goes through, a footballing athlete goes through, um, to restrict it to injuries. Um, I think the football now is developing itself into non-physical. Um, and it, it's, it's good because the lifespan of a footballer will increase um, due to less injuries. It's a, it's a fact. So ball possession and technical um, functionalities is a key component of any football now. Uh, there is a saying, once a, a great manager from England, um, Brian Clough, I don't know if uh, you're aware of Brian Clough from Nottingham Forest, he said, love the ball like it's your possession. As long as you keep possession, the opposition cannot take the ball from you. That's all you need to know.